Hello, my friends. How are you? Thank you for stopping by and saying hello. This is the Outstanding Life Show, and my name is Jason. And here's where we talk about all things recovery. We talk about overcoming addiction. We are leaving our phones with the mute not turned on. But welcome to this weekend's episode. We are running a little bit earlier this week. I'm actually headed out and I'm venturing downtown. We've got uh, quite a few events happening here in Calgary and there's some amazing weather. It is crazy hot outside, but I wanted to let you guys know you guys are still a priority. I want to make sure I'm getting my commitment out to you where we're making episodes every week. We do every weekend around 8 p.m., but this week we're running a little bit earlier. Um, but nonetheless, I put together a little video. We are working on our little... Um, the slideshow and we're going to talk about vulnerability so before i jump into that hold on i'm just going to switch over to the video i'm going to run some commentary on it and so i think i've got it set up here hold on let's give it a whirl yes all right so vulnerability so welcome to the outstanding life show my name is jason joliffe and we're talking about vulnerability today you know, there came a point where I had no idea how to live my life. I was just a big ball of fear. I was self-centered. I was filled with anxiety. You know, I was always miserable. But then everything changed. You know, until now, I was only ever doing things the same way. You know, if the things I've always done, you know, if they've led me to feel misery and despair, if it's to hurt everyone I love, you know, I feel like I've accomplished nothing. Nothing. But, you know, what if I do the opposite of what I normally do? You know, how would I feel then? You know, when I actually change my priorities, when I, you know, my nervous system, when I rewire myself, huge change can actually last you know when I lean into the discomfort of the work you know I have the courage to be imperfect you know at the core of shame is vulnerability you know is there something about me that you know if other people know it or if they see it you know I won't be worthy of connection You know, shame, shame is universal. We all have it. You know, no one wants to talk about it, but the less I talk about it, the more I have it. So the thought of me not being good enough, you know, be it you're not thin enough or not rich enough or not beautiful enough, or if you believe you're not smart enough, you know, for me, that feeling was excruciating vulnerability. You know, this belief of in order for connection to happen, I have to allow myself to be really seen. Vulnerability is the most accurate measurement of courage. Vulnerability is the first thing you look for in a person, but it's the last thing you show. And when I see it, when I see it, sorry. Hold on, I'm just going to cycle back because that's an important thing to show you. When I see it, when I'm not good enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not beautiful enough, if I'm not smart enough, for me that's excruciating vulnerability. You know, this belief, this limiting belief that in order for connection to happen, I have to allow myself to be really seen. And vulnerability is the most accurate measurement of courage. And that, that statement really resonates with me. That statement has a deep connection. Vulnerability is the first thing you look for, but it's the last thing that I will show you. And that's it's an intriguing statement because we look for that, that level of honesty in others. We look for that level of integrity to being open and honest and transparent. But then oftentimes that vulnerability is the last thing that we show others. To be fully transparent is the last thing I show others. And it's crazy when you think about it. 
so when I recognize that in other people, that vulnerability, it's, you know, it, it becomes courage and daring. And when I see it in me, however, suddenly I'm remapping that as weakness. So then that helps attribute to the fact that, you know, if I'm thinking about that as weakness, no wonder why it's the last thing I show people. Where if it's something I notice in others or if they share that with me, it's got a whole other label. It's labeled as courage and daring. You know, what makes me vulnerable is what makes me beautiful. And what makes you vulnerable is what makes you beautiful. You know, it's not about the winning. It's not about losing. Vulnerability is is about having the courage to show up and be seen when I have no control over the outcome. So being able to show up regardless. So vulnerability is not a weakness. It sounds like truth and it feels like courage. And truth and courage aren't always comfortable. And that's a hard concept that I struggled with for a long time. In in the heat of my recovery and the you know, before my addiction, it before my recovery, in the heat of my addiction, I had this concept of, you know, if I avoid being vulnerable, if I don't show that, it it's some semblance of strength, you know, it's some semblance of courage. But in in the reality world, you know, living life on life's terms, the opposite is true, where truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but being vulnerable in today's day and age, you know, I don't want to say it's encouraged, but being honest with yourself is is encouraged. Being honest with others is encouraged. And part of that includes being uncomfortable. Part of that includes being vulnerable. You know, I'll have the compassion to be kind to myself and to be kind to others. And when I'm willing to let go of who I think I should be, it gives me room to be who I am. And who I am is vulnerable. And in the face of addiction and struggle, you know, I choose to live a life of gratitude and love. You know, I may be imperfect, but I'm whole. Okay, hold on. Let's just switch over. Okay. So I got this one now. And so, with vulnerability, this is the pre-show for The Outstanding Life. I think I've gone over the timer for my five minutes to start everything off. Um, But this is The Outstanding Life show. This is the first time you're here. Say hello. Leave Leave a mention in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. It's really exciting. I have this show every week. I I make it a priority. I want to include a question of the day. And, you know, what does vulnerability mean to you? Uh, If you want to leave that in the comments, that'll be awesome. If you like what I do here and you want to know more about when we go live, we we send messages out every weekend around 8 p.m. This show, we're running a little bit earlier, but... If you want to get a reminder, type show in the comments, and I'll get a message sent out to you through Facebook. It can send you a reminder before we go live. It's actually pretty awesome, because if you do the the hearts and the stars and the likes, um, it doesn't always notify you, which is kind of weird. I don't really understand it, but if you want to be sure to get a reminder, type show in the comments, and we'll go ahead and get that message sent out to you. Okay, so for me... Just jumping into the recovery aspect, I was, I had gone to a treatment center and part of what we had to do, part of the exercise was when you think of, you know, recovery, when you think of like, what is the first thing you need to do? You need to, step one is admitting you have a problem. And for me, I had avoided that to the point where, you know, I was looking for things as a distraction I was looking for things that would help mitigate that thought or that feeling there's this roadblock this elephant in the room that you know I might have been doing everything 
else successfully, but I wasn't looking after myself successfully. And I wasn't allowing myself to be vulnerable. I wasn't allowing myself to have the courage to look within. And instead, I was looking at other things to help mask that. Um, we're going to jump into that later about what is buffering, what is avoiding, what is distraction. But just just speaking about this for a minute, you know, step one, meaning admitting that I had a problem. And when I was in recovery, when I made the choice to go to a treatment center, I had thought that step one was everything I just shared, that admitting I had a problem. But in reality, step one was actually to make a list. And a list, like you, like you make a list and you write it down of all the numbing that I have done. And you think about it and you're like, so what, do you, what does that mean? What is, when you say make a list, does that mean, you know, four ounces of tequila, three beers on Sunday? You, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I, when they had laid down the idea of, this is the steps you're going to have to go through. And then step one, yes, you're here by admitting you had a problem, but the coursework that we're going to put you through is to make a list of all the numbing you have done. And, you know, in in recovery, it actually, we had to go to a morning meeting. We had to go to, there was like a class we had to attend in the daytime. After class, we had to go uh, to a meeting at night. After, well, after dinner, and then we had to go outside to an external meeting, like in the streets of Calgary. There's 400 meetings in a week, so we had to attend all these things. And it was a, over the course of nine weeks, you, you attend like hundreds and hundreds of meetings. So we're going on three or four meetings a day. And they also had other rules, like you couldn't go to the same meeting twice in a week. So you had to go to, and you had to get carpools and bus rides. It was, it was an adventure every day. But making a list of all the numbing I have done was step one. So I'm attending all the coursework every week and I'm attending all these meetings every week. And then this coursework I had to do suddenly I had to make a list of all the numbing I had done, all the, all the booze I had drunk, all the, all the substances I had consumed. And for me, it was really hard to document that. Um... I had started consuming alcohol and drugs when I turned 22, but by the time I turned 25, I had lost almost everything. I had alienated my family and my friends, and even though what I had to do was document, what was that, three years, 22 to 25? Math while I'm live, that's crazy. So three years plus, and... It took me, I want to say, a good three weeks to to pour my heart and my soul into this. And I, you know, like you, they give you those binders in, you know, those notebooks that you fold them in high school and grade school. And so I wrote them all out and I had year one, this, year two, this. And I had broken it down by months and it became a lot of heartache just to remember all the challenges and after three weeks I decided to hand it in I was like that's it I had read it I had reread it and I had gone over it countless times and now I was at a point where I'm like this is done let's hand it in and then you hand it in to the counselors and the thing is is the place I went to this treatment center it was actually run by people who have already been through the program that was one of the things that attracted me to that program was all the staff members had been through recovery and I liked that level of accountability. I liked that level of transparency. So, you know, you, it takes an addict to know an addict. It takes a, someone in recovery to know someone in recovery. And so when I handed it in, they went through it and they flipped through it and they're like, Hey, you know what, Jason, you have written down every single item of alcohol you've drunk all the different substances you've consumed and that's great you've done a lot of hard work here and I was like that's awesome it took me forever to fill it out and they said but you're missing something I'm like what do you mean what do you mean I'm missing I'm not missing anything that's three years of my life three years plus of my life everything I consumed all the all the things I was using to avoid all the numbing I was doing and 
They said, but you're missing a, a critical component. And I'm like, well, what's that? And they're like, well, there's a whole other part to it where you have the list of the impact to your friends and family and your loved ones. You've only made the list of just what you've consumed, but you need another part of that list where the impact to your family, your life, your work, your friends. And I was like, but I don't think you realize how hard it was just to make the list. And they're like, yeah, but you, you still have to complete the other part of the list, which is, you know, all the pain and suffering you caused. And I was like, holy crap, you want me to document that? I thought I was only going to have to make a list of just the things I consumed and the excuses I was coming up with to, to justify that. And they're like, no, 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 no. You missed the whole point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is to document the list of the people you've harmed. And I'm like, but I don't want to have to do that. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what you want. What matters is the life you want to live. You know, you want to keep avoiding these things or do you want to do the coursework to get through it? And then I was floored because here I was three weeks into a treatment center, three weeks into what I had thought was beginning the steps of recovery. And all of a sudden, for me, it felt like day one. For me, it felt like that was the first day of being sober. But I had been three weeks in already and now I was like, holy crap, this step one is going to be deeper than anything I'd ever done. And I shared that with the counselor. I was like, this step one is going to be the end all be all. It's going to be so big. It's going to be nuts. And they're like, no, wait till you get to step four. I'm like, what's step four? I thought that was it. And they're like, no, no, no. We got like 12 steps to go through. Step one is make a list of all the people you've harmed and all the things you've consumed. Step four, we're going to talk about making amends. Later on, you're actually going to do it. And I was like, but I didn't know that. And they're like, well, now you know, but this is incomplete homework. We need you to go back and finish it. So I quickly took the weekend and I filled it out. And you open up to that level of honesty within yourself. And that's what it took for me to move forward, to get past step one. And uh, before I jump in, before I move forward, I just want to go check the comments. I have totally forgotten about that for a minute and oh man we have barbara hello barbara thank you for stopping by this is actually pretty cool i'm running the show a little bit earlier today um we have the calgary stampede and there's a lot of fun events going on today i am meeting someone a little bit later and it was around the time of the show so i wasn't able to go and commit to staying with the eight o'clock structured time i remember barbara's show she had her show at like early in the morning she's joining us from winnipeg that's awesome, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Okay. So if you're new here, uh, type show in the comments and you will receive a reminder when we go live. If this is the first time you're joining us, uh, my name is Jason. This is the Outstanding Life Show where we talk about all things recovery. We talk about addiction. We talk about the challenges we face. The show really isn't designed for someone who is currently on the struggle. It's meant for somebody who's already made the decision that this is a life they want to live. We're just going to happen to live this without alcohol, without drugs. We're going to be an outstanding life together. It's more, mainly meant as a resource. You know, in past episodes, we talked about the benefits of having a solid community. Last week, we actually chatted about the benefits of gratitude, all the different ways that it can impact our life. We talked about relationships in a previous one, triggers, stress, I can't believe how many episodes we've done so far, Um, but today's episode, we're actually talking about vulnerability. And so if you're new here, say hello in the comments, and I just want to give a special shout out to you if you are new. Okay, so let's bring this up, and we talked about numbing and buffering. We talked about uh, the stuffing and excuses and it's crazy what you know what labels we associate to it you know being someone who has been through recovery who's still in recovery it's amazing the different languages we attach to it but it's all the same thing you know if you're avoiding something you're stuffing your emotions if you're coming up with excuses to justify something again you're you're buffering you're numbing it And the crazy part about numbing is we we often will try and do something to 
avoid a traumatic experience or we're trying to avoid a specific feeling or a specific emotion or we're trying to numb a specific event in our life. But when we do numb, when we consume alcohol or drugs, when we eat without you know, healthy measures or if we work out at the gym to excess extents, when we take those things, we can't numb selectively. Numbing impacts a wide variety of things. And one of the impacts for me was emotion, where I had wanted to avoid a specific emotion or a specific feeling. And in conjunction with that, I applied these numbing impacts. And the numbing impact affected my health, my mental well being, my stress levels, my uh, emotions. They went from having, you know, a healthy, abundance amount of emotions where you've got a wide variety where you can experience them. To instead limiting myself to just a handful where either I'm just really, really happy or I'm like really, really upset. It was like hot and cold. It was zero to 60 and that's all there was. Because when you reduce yourself down to just a handful of emotion, that's not life. That's just, you're just getting by. And by getting by, I mean like, you know when you're driving a car and it's a snowy storm or it's raining really hard. In Canada, we have snowstorms like 10 months of the year. So when you're driving and you're holding on to the, the steering wheel and you're holding on so tight that your knuckles, they turn white. And so we call that in recovery, like you're just white knuckling it through. You can just hold on to your recovery and just barely get by and skid through life. But then you're just white knuckling it through. You're not actually living life. And when you're numbing, when you're using these substances, when you're not being honest with yourself, when I am not being honest with myself, that's all I'm doing is numbing. And numbing can have a very detrimental impact. And that's where being vulnerable comes in. That's where being honest with myself about my feelings and my thoughts. In a previous episode, we did talk about the benefits of transparency and being honest with ourselves and honest with others. And that's what helps create that relatableness, that relationship, not just with yourself, but with others. And if you want to know more about that, hi, Kitty. What's going on? If you want to know more about that, please go and check out one of the previous episodes. Uh, but I want to check out the comments here in just a minute. We have Barbara. Barbara's saying hello. It's good to see you. Have fun at the Stampede. Yes, that's awesome. I can't wait. Hello, Chantel. Chantel's here. She's from Quebec. Thank you for stopping by, Chantel. That's awesome. Okay, let's take this off and let's move forward. And so, what was I doing? <laughs> when you're live, of course. I was afraid to dig deeper. For myself, I was afraid of being honest and transparent. I was afraid of digging beyond the pain. And, Kitty, you can't come up here. And I was afraid of resurfacing that suffering. Because when you stuff your feelings... When you choose to not be vulnerable, when you choose to not be honest with yourself, Kitty, you're going to go in for another camera. But you're cute. You're allowed to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Thank you for watching and being patient. My cat is choosing to bomb the live show. Kitty. Oh, that's awesome. And so I was talking about being honest and transparent. I was talking about going beyond my um, stuffing, my emotion, my inability to deal with what what challenges I was facing. And in choosing to dig deeper, in choosing to go beyond the pain and suffering, at the root of that, that's the vulnerability that I'm getting to. So by being vulnerable, by going through the exercise of allowing that to take place, that allows healing to take place. But if all we ever do is stuff and avoid and mask or buffer, pretty soon we've numbed everything to the point where there's no room for growth. There's no room for the ability to move forward or to move up. And so this is where I'm getting to. So the exercise of being vulnerable, getting to know my emotions, getting... I don't want to say getting used to my thoughts, that's not the right word, but it's being able to recognize our thoughts and our patterns and our habits and the languages we use to describe that. 
So in the video I, I showed at the beginning of this with the pre-show, we talked about, you know, labeling it something other than restrictive, you know, choosing something better for your life other than this belief, this limiting belief where if all I ever believe is in, in is suffering and if all I ever believe in is this life of normalcy where there is no benefit to moving forward, if that's all I ever believe, then the only way I'm going to succeed is by failing. And that's not a, the way to live an outstanding life. That's not a way to move forward or to choose something happier or more exciting. You know, being compassionate enough to myself and that allows me to be compassionate to others and if you don't do that if you're just this hollow structure of a person this shell of a person you're not going to have any room to grow how can you how can i recharge everybody else's batteries if i'm not recharging my own and i think it's important to share that and i think it's important to talk about and we have megan joining us hello megan thank you for stopping by I'm glad your hand was recovering. I know you had some challenges with that, but I think that's pretty cool. You're still resilient and shining and amazing. So keep shining on. I like your message. And you put the little sun emoji. Yes, it's like 32 degrees or 27 degrees. I don't know. It's crazy hot. I have the window open. I have to keep it open because it gets too hot in here with the lights and the cameras. So, okay. So let's, let's. The exercise of being vulnerable and getting to know our emotions. And so it's important because here we identify that, you know, my thoughts, they lead to actions. And it's not the actions themselves that create the feeling. It's the emotion that we attach to those actions that allow us to experience those feelings. It would be, uh, so an, an example would be, I was, I made the decision to uh, remove something from my life, to remove this person from my life. And in doing so, it wasn't the act of doing it that made me feel better. What made me feel better was actually the decision. And once I made the decision, suddenly everything else became easier to deal with. Because I was no longer going to tolerate this kind of experience. I was no longer going to tolerate this level of uh, gratitude or this spark or this zeal of life. I wanted to attach my own emotion to it and I wanted to attach my own experience to it. And when I made the decision I'm no longer going to accept this kind of behavior or accept this kind of uh, treatment or something, suddenly it gave room for everything else. And when I have this here, building patterns or patterns as I've got typo down below, if if my emotions that I experience on a frequent basis repeat themselves, that builds the pattern. And here's where certain habits can be reassuring. Certain habits, when you build them, they can be a benefit. Sharing that transparency, sharing that, that honesty with myself and honesty with others, by keeping that vulnerability... By keeping that transparency, I'm able to continue to have that. But if I were to, let's say, a bad experience were to harm me, you know, the guy leaves you, the girl leaves you, you're just really angry, you have to let someone go at work, or you get let go at work, you know, these are all experiences that can take place. And if we take those moments and we hold that resentment, and rather than being honest and transparent, we start to build walls and if these walls are reinforced pretty soon you're not going to let anybody in and if you're not letting anybody in you're not you're not letting yourself out and if you're not letting yourself out you know that's the true you know you're 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 dying inside and if you're at that spot where you're not letting yourself be vulnerable if you're not opening yourself to others when somebody does want to get through when you do choose to want to let somebody in, with all these walls built up, it's almost impossible to let people in or to let yourself out. Again, you're the shell of a person, which isn't a life to live, and that's not the kind of life that someone watching this show enjoys. You know, if you're going to have an outstanding life, if you're going to have an outstanding life, if you're going to want to choose a life of overcoming addiction or choosing a recovery life, it's not always about that, but you can't 
be filled with gratitude and resentment at the same time. You know, you can't be vulnerable and you know what I mean? Like you can't just be vulnerable and not be hurt. You're going to have to want to love even if there's a chance of being hurt. You're going to have to want to show up even though you can't control the outcome. And that's the video we showed at the beginning. That's the video we showed at the beginning of all this. And there's no wrong way to do it. There's no wrong way to be vulnerable. You don't want to be vulnerable without cause or without, without, you know, aimlessly kind of doing this. Here, hold on. I'll show you guys the video again. Let's move it over to the beginning. We'll close up with the video a second time. But thank you for stopping by. I want to show you guys this. So I have it up front. I'm going to take off the lower third. And then we'll do something fun. And we'll transition this over. So here we have the Outstanding Life Show. My name is Jason. We're talking about vulnerability. And, you know, there came a point in my life where I had no idea how to live my life. You know, it was this big ball of fear. I was self-centered. I was filled with anxiety. You know, I'd always been miserable. But then everything changed. You know, until now, I'd only ever done things the same way. You know, if the things I've always done, if they've led me to feel misery and despair... If I, all I ever did was hurt everyone I love, you know, I've accomplished nothing. So what if I do the opposite of what I usually do? How would I feel then? You know, ask yourself bigger questions. When I actually change my priorities of my nervous system, when I rewire myself, you know, huge change can last. When I lean into the discomfort of the work, I have the courage to be imperfect. You know, at the core of shame is vulnerability. You know, if there is something that if other people know it or see it, that I won't be worthy of connection. And the thing is, is that shame is universal. We all have it. No one wants to talk about it, but the less I talk about it, the more I have it. And that's where the transparency comes in. The thought of not being good enough, or, or if I'm not thin enough, you know, if that's your thought, or if I'm not rich enough, or if I'm not beautiful enough, or not smart enough, whatever it is, is that limiting belief. If that's the thoughts we hold, you know, for me, that's excruciating vulnerability. this belief of in order for a connection to happen I have to allow myself to be really seen vulnerability this one's big guys vulnerability is the most accurate measurement of courage vulnerability is the first thing I look for in other people in you but what I think is crazy is it's the last thing that I'm willing to show you it's like contradictory. It's one of those oxymoron things. When I see it in other people, it's courage. It's daring. But when I see it in me, I somehow perceive it as weakness. You see how these things, if you rebrand it, if you hold on to it in a weird way, it becomes reality. So what makes me vulnerable makes me beautiful. What makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful. And it's not about winning. And it's not about losing. Vulnerability is about having the courage to show up and be seen when I have no control over the outcome. Vulnerability is not a weakness. It sounds like the truth and it feels like courage. And truth and courage aren't always comfortable. Ain't that the way? You know, I'll have the compassion to be kind to myself and to others. When I'm willing to let go of who I think I should be, it gives me the room to be who I am. And who I am is vulnerable. And in the face of addiction and struggle, 
I choose to live a life of gratitude and love. And while I may be imperfect, I'm whole. And I think that's the message of today. You know, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to have thoughts and feelings. And it's okay to ask yourself these questions. And it's okay to not know all the answers. Yeah, I want to bring this up. This is today's safety moment. It's okay to not know the answers. I have these funny safety moments. I enjoy them. Okay, let's come over to the other camera. I want to check out the, the comments here. Yes, I agree, Barbara says. Jason, that's amazing. Thank you, Barbara. I love that you're here. We're almost like... I love that your show is on family resilience, and I love that you're... the way you've approached it. And I thought a lot about it, and I was thinking, you know, our shows are, are almost similar. Mine's from the aspect of the individual who's gone through the struggle. And I love how your show is related to like the family dynamic of it, that resilience component. I think that's huge. And I appreciate all the all the amazing work you're doing. So I just wanted to share that real quick. So thank you for stopping by. And so I just want to finish off with this thought, you know, where my energy goes, life will grow. Great things can come from vulnerability. You know, it doesn't have to be this shell of an experience where you hide yourself away from something. It can be the space of dynamic growth. It can be an amazing burst of motivation that moves us forward, that propels us to do these amazing things. It doesn't have to be crippling. Vulnerability, I mean. Anyway, my name is Jason. Thank you for watching the Outstanding Life show where we talk about recovery and overcoming addiction. And, you know, this is a tool for the skill set for those who want to choose this life. I'm not here to help convince people that this is something you should do or should be doing. This is mainly a, a component, a companion to yourself, if you will, to someone who's already made that choice. Um, anyway, if you like what I'm doing here, if you like the what we've talked about, type show in the comments and we'll have a reminder sent out to you for the next time we go live. In the meantime, I wanted to say thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate that. Tosh was here helping helping produce the show today i think that's awesome thank you for being patient thank you for stopping by i have to make my way downtown i was vulnerable earlier and i asked someone if they wanted to go for coffee and i'm about to go do that in the meantime you guys take care have fun and i'll see you next week Bye bye